Okay, welcome to our weekly Forex forecast. And this is for trading uh, for the week of March 4th to the 8th, 2019. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. As usual, we'll start off by taking a look at our calendar here. In terms of calendar, on Sunday, we have some Australian uh, data coming out, which will have an impact on Australian dollar. This is building approval, so important data here. And then on Monday, we do have a central bank here, the Reserve Bank of Australia. We have the rate statement. They're not, um, they're not expected to raise rates here. Uh, however, we have been going through some interesting times in terms of central bankers. So if we hear, uh, so it's all about the commentary. What are they saying? What are their forecasts? So if they express any kind of concerns um, about the trade relations or if they express concerns about the state of the economy, whether that's global economy or local economy for Australia, um, all of that can have a negative impact on Australian dollar. However, if they are positive, if they are forecasting growth for the uh, Australian economy and they are more bullish on the economy, that will have a positive impact on Australian dollar because then the market will start expecting them to, to raise rates. Uh, so this is what we are looking for right now. But right now, tomorrow, not looking for them to raise rates at this point. And then on Tuesday, we have Bank of England, Governor Carney speaking. Um, and for uh, British Pound or UK here, any kind of Brexit news will have an impact on the market. So last week we saw there were some positive uh, Brexit news where there were some uh, comments in regards to potentially delaying Brexit. All of that is positive for the British Pound. So if we hear more of those comments, that will be good for a British Pound. But if it's the other way around, then it will be negative to talk about uh, not being able to negotiate a deal and things like that. That will be negative for British Pound, so keep that in mind. And then, of course, uh, Bank of England, Governor Carney, his speech will be important. And RBA, Governor Lau speaking. So um, Australia here does things a little bit differently. First, they do the rate statement, and then the following day, they usually have the... Um, the speech here or the press conference. So as a result of that, it gets spread out over two days. So if initially there will be an impact from the statement. And then when Governor Lau speaks, then we will see more volatility in the market or another, um, another movement in the market. So just watch out for that. And we also have GDP numbers. Those are important. Um, so that's for Australia as well. And then uh, this is our non-farm weeks here, uh, week here as well. So we have ADP non-farm employment change numbers for the US on Wednesday. Uh, very important here, Canadian trade balance numbers. Um, so, that, uh, so that will be important here as well because uh, last week the numbers that came out were actually not very good. So if we get negative numbers, then it will have a further negative impact on Canadian dollar. Same thing with trade balance numbers out of the US here as well. Um, if the numbers decline, especially keeping in mind that we have US-China trade negotiations going on right now. So uh, that number can have a negative impact on the US dollar. And we have Bank of Canada rate statement here. Um, at this point, uh, Bank of Canada is just holding uh, the rate, not expected to raise rate at this time, but um, they have expressed concerns about the state of the economy. So if they, are, uh, if they express concerns about the economy again, that will be negative for Canadian dollar. So that's, why, that's where we have, to, uh, we have to pay attention. Um, so the question here is, if the rate stays the same, is it good or bad for the currency? It's, it's neutral for the currency then. If the rates stay the same, that's okay. That means nothing's really changed. That's why it's the commentary um, that will make a difference. So if the rates go up, that's positive for the currency. Interest rates go down, that's negative for the currency. When they hold, hold, them, hold them as they are, that is neutral. So no impact from the interest rate changes then the commentary becomes more important. What is their outlook? What are they looking at? Because that will dictate future interest rate hikes. Um, and then we have retail sales numbers. So lots of data from Australia this week. 
retail sales numbers here on Thursday here. Uh, we have ECB. ECB had said that uh, they are likely to, uh, well, the way they had phrased it last year was they are not going to uh, raise rates before summer of 2019. But I think that potential interest rate hike date of summer 19 may get pushed back as well because all the other central banks are now concerned about uh, the economic outlook. So I don't think ACB is going to raise rates even in summer of 2019, but at this point they are not looking to raise rates. And then we have press conference. And like I said before, initial, there will be an initial response to this one here and then another response to the press conference because this is when Draghi will actually give his speech and people get a chance to ask questions. So um, it generally um, is a volatile period for the euro. So keep that in mind. So that is on Thursday. And then on Friday, we have US uh, big uh, market moving data here. So first Canadian uh, for Canada here, we have employment change numbers. Um, again, if the employment numbers drop or unemployment numbers increase, that will be negative for uh, the Canadian dollar. US here, big week for the US, FOMC, I'm sorry, FOMC, non-farm payroll and FOMC are two main events that are very important and make a big, uh, can have a big, uh, you know, make a big difference in the markets. So non-farm payroll numbers here. So uh, employment has been good for US over the last little while. But if we see any decrease um, or the hourly earnings go down, so both the numbers are important, the employment numbers as well as the hourly earning numbers. So if either one of those decline, that can have a negative impact on the US dollar. If they go up, that will be positive uh, for the US. And then we have Fed Chair Powell speaking again. He has been speaking um, Oh, well, he was doing the testimony and then he's been speaking quite frequently over the last little while. So I think at this point, uh, the message is clear that Fed is in no, um, they're not really likely to raise rates very soon here. They're going to wait and see. That has been the message that has been coming across from the Fed. So anything uh, different from that can cause a market reaction. But if that's the message, um, generally, then there shouldn't be much of a change. So that's our, uh, those, that's the news. Let's go on to our charts now and let's see what's going on. So Euro here, we'll start with Euro US dollar weekly chart. And as we can see, Euro has still, it's still trading in this range here. It has gone up um, towards the, more towards the middle of the range here and then a price reacted at this support and resistance level that's coming all the way from here. Uh, and now we have this uh, weekly pin bar situation. So we, we still have green in the candle. That means there is an up, there's a chance that a price will go higher. So in this case here, looking for price to Um, okay. Okay. So here I'm looking for price to uh, maybe do another push up before it drops, but basically looking for a drop here just because of that rejection at this 1.1420 level. And now looking for it to come back down and test uh, the lower levels once again. So in case of our, uh, in case of our levels here, um, the target will be 1.1220 level. So, but before that, so first target will be 12, 1.1270 uh, level, and then potentially lower into 1220. So biases to the downside, but I would watch out for that initial push to the upside. Now do keep in mind, we have non-farm payroll numbers coming out. And when we have important news like that, that can change the light a landscape completely. And we have ECB for Euro, which could completely change things. So if ECB is negative, Euro could really go down. If it's pop, really bullish, it could go all the way up. 
So keep that in mind. Both of these crosses or both of these currencies have important news coming out. But other than that, just purely based on technicals here, I will look for a drop, maybe a push up before it drops. First target is 1.1270, second target uh, 1.1225. So bearish bias for euro dollar. Pound dollar here, this one, it pushed higher um, earlier part of the week. And then on a Friday, uh, Thursday and Friday, we saw prices drop. So in this case, we see that it's at this 1.3360 level which is an important support and resistance, but there's still bullishness in this candle. Uh, and the candle is, size of the candle is the same as the size of the pin, um, which gives it a bullish to neutral bias here. But overall bias is still bullish. So we'll go with the bullish bias on this, but I would be mindful of what price does um, at the high. So if it tests the high here, so we have to see what it does then. If it stays below, I will look for it to drop further then. And um, any, any Brexit news, of course, can change the path of this completely. But for now, it looks like the momentum that we had for the last two weeks, that is not there um, as much, So, which means that things could change. But there is still a lot of bullishness in this candle. So biases to the upside. First target is 1.3360 which is the high of this candle. And if it drops from the, if it doesn't go through, then I would look for it to come back down towards 1.3050 level. But should it go through, and then we are looking at 1.3450 and all the way into 1.3620, so it could continue going. Um, so we have two different scenarios that could play out for British pound here. Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar reached where we were looking for it to go. Um, so in this case, last week we had a neutral candle close. So the bias, um, so the candle that we have is, is a doji here. So spinning top, there's no, it opened and closed at exactly the same point. This week it went to test the high and then closed um, right into the bottom. So bias is a bearish, that's a nice bearish candle here. And I would look for price to drop further. So in this case here, uh, looking for it to, here. So in this case, next target will be 0 0.6920 level. So looking for price to drop further and we could get a, a bit of a pullback like we generally do. Um, and so this is the type of move I'm looking for. So the first target is 0 0.6990, second target 0 0.6920. Biases to the downside for Aussie dollar. New Zealand dollar here has been a little bit stronger than Aussie here, but overall we have a bearish candle close for the week as well. So bias is to the downside. And in this case, a good pullback level could be around um, 0 0.6850 potentially, and then looking for a drop from there. So biases to the downside and target is 0 0.6720 level. So bearish bias here for New Zealand dollar. Okay, so next one. Um, now, since we are looking at dollar crosses here, just keep in mind towards the end of the week, uh, we're going to start, um, the, people, all the market will start positioning for non-farm payroll, and that could change uh, the dynamics for the U.S. dollar. So non-farm payroll could change things completely, especially on Friday. So just watch out for that. Now, dollar uh, CAD here, negative news for um, data that came out for uh, Canadian dollar here pushed the price up all the way, still trading in that little range that we have. So we have a big bullish candle close, looking for it to go higher. And in this case, I'm looking for price to potential pullback and then go up higher. So first target here is um, 1.3370 level. And then above that, we're looking at 1.3450 level. So bullish bias for Canadian dollar.
But the top here, this is a bit of a range. So if you look at it for several weeks now, price has traded in this range, which means that once price gets into the high, it could turn around. Because here we have a, had a nice weekly bullish candle close and then price didn't even make it all the way and then turn around. So just keep that in mind. So um, even though we have a bullish candle close, once it gets to the high of the range, things can change and price can turn around to stay in, in the range. But for now, bias is bullish and looking for it to go first to 1.3370 level. If it goes through, then we are looking at 1.3450. Euro pound here. This one is still bearish. We saw price drop. Uh, we were looking for a drop. We saw price drop. And now um, it went all the way into the support resistance level at 0 0.8520. And now we have an interesting candle where we do have a pin in the bottom, but there is still bearishness in the candle here, it's still red candle. So what that means is that we could see things change. Now it could pull back up further into this support and resistance level. So I will look for a pullback and then a further drop. So bias is still to the downside basically, but the momentum is not um, there as we had, as we saw for the previous two weeks. So these two weeks were, uh, had a lot of momentum, especially with this tweezer top pattern that we had. But now we have a large pin, that means buyers are stepping in, which means the momentum is not quite there. So I would still look for a retest of the bottom here at 0 0.8520. If it breaks, only then uh, would I look for the lower level at 0 0.8450 level. So bias is to the downside still, but with caution here. Euro Swiss franc, this one seems to be trading in that range still from a daily here. And we see that price has, well, there we are. It's sitting in this range, but it does have slightly a bearish bias here. We have a pin with, um, uh, with a large wick on top. So I will look for price to drop here. 1.1300 uh, will be the first target. If it gets through here, then we're looking at 1.1260 level here or potentially even 50 level. So bias is to the downside here for uh, Euro Swiss franc bearish bias. Okay, so pound Swiss franc here. This one had a big move and then we have seen a drop. Now from a weekly perspective, looks very much like um, our, um, our pound dollar looked. So in this case, bias is still bullish. It's holding above this previous support resistance level here. So looking for a bullish bias still, but if it goes into the high, just like we talked about our uh, pound dollar, if it goes into the high and does not break through, then chances are it will reverse. So in this case, uh, the move that I would look for first will be a pullback potentially into 1.3160 level. If it holds above, I look for a retest of the high. If it goes through, then looking for it to go higher. So for now, um, bias is still bullish because we are in this upward trend here. And first target is 1.3360. If it goes through that, or 3350, if it goes through that, that 1.3480 level. Uh, next one here, we have dollar Swiss franc. Uh, dollar Swiss franc, last week we were looking for a drop. We got that drop, but this week's candle is a neutral candle. So we still have a little bit of bearishness, not, not enough here, um, but price has gone into the bottom here and now it has pulled back from there. So in this case, um, we could look for a bit of a drop here, but this one could go either way because it is neutral. Um, we could look for a drop and then a move back into uh, the same range here because it has, this one has also been range bound for several weeks here. It's just been here. Um, so now this is not the perfect range. It's just that we have gone into the high and now price has dropped from there. 
So I would look for basically retest, see if it will retest the level and then go back towards the middle of the range. But the candle is neutral, which means it can go in either direction here. Pound yen. Pound yen is looking quite bullish here from the weekly perspective, but we are very close to the high here. So price has moved up last week, very solid bullish candle close here. And now we are close to our um, this level that price has not been able to break since April of 2018. So at this point, bias is bullish. I will look for a retest of 149.50 and um, potentially a reversal from there because it's a strong level. Now, should some news come out about uh, US-China making progress in their trade relations or reaching an agreement or something like that, then I would look for this resistance to break. Otherwise, I think it could hold and we could see a drop here. So my first scenario that I'm looking for is price goes into the high and then moves uh, comes back down from there just like it did here goes into the resistance and then drops that's my base case scenario that i'm looking for now should positive news come out from uh, from us china trade relations or something this that can push the price up here another thing that's going on with japanese yen right now is bank of japan has been quite vocal about uh, saying that they're going to lose in the monetary policy. They're concerned about the strength of uh, Japanese yen. And because when Japanese yen is strong, their exports are negatively impacted and they don't want that. Bank, uh, Bank of Japan doesn't want that. Japan doesn't want that. So as a result of that, Bank of Japan has basically come out and said that it's the first bank that we have seen that has said that we are ready to do um, easing of the monetary policy, which has a negative impact on the currency. That's why we have seen that Japanese yen has not been that strong. But if positive data comes out, positive uh, comments or news comes out about US-China trade relations, that will push it up uh, as well. If negative news comes out in regards to that, that will push the price down. So regardless of what Bank of Japan is saying, we will see a drop in uh, yen crosses if no agreement has been reached. And this is why Bank of, Bank of Japan is kind of preempting the situation um, and they are, they're being very vocal about that. So that's kind of like verbal intervention where they're trying to manipulate the currency without actually taking action, right? So that, that's central banks do that. that. That's one of the things they do to manage their currency strength. And right now, Bank of Japan is concerned um, so watch out for that. For now, this is bullish. First target, 149.50. Second target, 153. Um, so bullish bias for pound yen. Same thing with euro yen here as well. This one has also gone through. We have a big solid bullish candle close. So this looks bullish. I would um, look for it to go into 127.80 level. That would be the first target. And then next target is 129.26. Now, uh, do keep in mind that, again, we are into strong support and resistance level right here. Price did sit there for several weeks before it dropped through here. So as a result of that, it could act as a resistance and we could see a drop from there. So that's a very, uh, uh, that's a very valid support resistance area for, to, for us to look for a potential reversal. Keep that in mind, but if it goes through that level, then we are looking for it to go into the next one. So um, that's what we are looking for. So bullish bias here for Euro Yen. Dollar Yen here um, is very bullish as well. All the Yen crosses have been bullish because Yen has been weak. So this is really bullish as well. Next support and resistance here is 112.30 level. So that will be the next level to watch out for. And beyond that, we are looking at 114. So bias is bullish for dollar yen as well. Aussie yen has kind of traded in this range here. So from a weekly perspective, we see that it's just it's still here, still in this range. So this one does not look very bullish. We could see 
um, a move back into the high here. And if it does not go through, then I will look for price to come back down. Now, should we get positive news with the US-China trade relations, I would look for a breakout and we could get this candle filled here. But for now, the first target is 79.80 level and we'll have to see how price reacts there. If it doesn't go through, I will look for it to come back into this range because it's still stuck in range here. New Zealand yen here, this one, um, we have a bullish, we have bullishness in this candle, but we have a large pin here. So in this case, because of the pin, we could see price drops, especially if New Zealand dollar drops, this one could drop with it as well. Um, but for now, because of the pin, I would look for price to drop from the high. But because there is small bullish, still bullishness in the candle because of the small candle body, it could go up to test the high once again. So this is a move I'm looking for. But should, like I said, should things change um, and all yen crosses go up, then this is likely to go through here as well. So biases. Uh, so if it breaks there, then I'm looking for 77.40 level there. So for now, bias is range bound. CAD yen here. CAD yen, um, we saw a drop in CAD yen because of the negative data that come, came out the other day. But that's a, that was a big uh, candle in dollar CAD on the daily, which means there will be pullbacks and stuff. But from this one here, that's a big rejection there. And I will look for price to potentially come back down here. Bias is to the downside for this one more so for the other commodity currency crosses here. So this is what I'm looking for. But like I said, should positive news come out, this one can go higher as well. But for now, bias is to the downside. 83.20 is the target here. All right, so let's go into our commodities. Let's see what gold is doing. Huge drop here on the daily in gold. So for weekly, we are looking bearish. Last week, the bias was to the downside. And this week, again, the bias is to the downside here. So in this case, the move that we can look for would be something like this. So that's what I'm looking for. Bias is to the downside. Uh, target is 1277. And if it goes through that, then 1261. But overall bias is to the downside at the moment. Oil here. Um, oil still trading in this range that we have seen for the last little while. Um, we saw a drop in oil. And so that was the double whammy for uh, Canadian dollar. Oil dropped as well as we saw negative um, news came, come out. So overall bias was negative. Um, now this one, we have a bearish engulfing candle close here. Railroad reversal pattern. So looking for it to drop further. So in this case, um, target is 53.60 level. That's the first target and it can go below that here into the bottom here, 51.40 uh, level. So bearish bias for oil. Copper here is kind of stuck in this range all week as well. So we have a bearish candle close for the week. So looking for price to draw further. Target is 2.84, so back into the support resistance level, this range that price had traded for that for so long. So we are looking uh, for price to come back into the top of that range, um, and then we'll see what it does. But for now, bias is to the downside. 2.84 is the target there. All right, so next one, we'll take a look at uh, silver. Okay, silver, a huge drop in silver here. From a weekly, we have gone, last time we were looking for a drop and we do have that. Next, we are looking for a further drop here. So in this case, um, looking for a pullback and then a drop. So 14.89 will be the target here. Bias is to the downside for silver. And that's why the commodity currencies have been dropping because commodities have been dropping uh, Bitcoin here, I do not have the most current uh, data, of course, because 
the platform is not open at my end all week. Uh, for now, though, it's holding above the support resistance at 37.15. If it holds above, it can go higher. But if it starts to, if it goes through that, then we are looking for it to come back into 33.20 level. So we have to wait and see. Um, it was holding above, didn't really go, go higher. And now it's just sitting into resistance. A lot of times when price sits into resistance, it can drop as well. So watch out for 37.15, that's the level. And we'll see how that one reacts there. Okay, next one. Let's take a look at our indices and then we'll wrap it up. So here, S&P 500, it's looking bullish. Um, but the problem here is we are right into support resistance. It is bullish though. So we have to see if it will break through. Now, if it does break through, then uh, this is the type of move I'm looking for, waiting for it to break, then a retest and finally a further move to the upside. And if the indices go up higher, equity indices uh, go up higher, then chances are um, the yen crosses will likely follow as well. So bias is to the upside and next target is 2875. Okay, so next one here. Sorry, I'm a little under the weather and my voice is just giving out on me. Sorry, one second. Okay, so here we go. Sorry, I had muted it. That's why you lost the audio. It was coughing. Uh, coughing really badly here. Okay, so we just have a couple more things. We'll wrap it up here. So this is looking quite bullish here, Nikkei. So when central banks say that they're going to do monetary policy easing, it's always good for the stock market and it's bad for the currency. And that's why we're seeing Nikkei go up. So we have a really solid bullish candle closed here. Biases to the upside, 221910 will be the next target. And if it goes beyond that, then we're looking at 22,364. So bullish bias for Nikkei here. Um, NASDAQ also moving higher here. So we do have a bullish candle close, which means looking for a further move to the upside here. And the next target here is 7220 level. And then we are into um, good resistance. But if it goes through that, we can go all the way into 73. 50 level. So bullish bias there still. Uh, DAX has moved up here as well. We are right into the support resistance level, which is important. And if it goes through, we are looking at 11870. So all the um, equity indices right now are looking bullish, except maybe for um, the FTSE here. This one does have some weakness, but we see rejection here. So with this, let's see. Um, so it's kind of right here. If it goes through this support resistance level, I will look for it to, for it to go into the high here or towards the high 72.50. So bias for this one, I think this one could go higher as well, especially as the other ones uh, go up higher. All right, so that's all I have for today. Any questions before we wrap it up here? All right, so no questions. So you guys have a wonderful uh, trading week and I will see you soon. Bye for now. Thanks, Graham. You're welcome.